Oh, oh, that was wet. Oh, I hate winter. I'm gonna go to Tahiti for the winter, I think. Battery storage for your home. That's what we're talking about in today's video. We're back here. You might remember we were here a few months ago doing various different jobs throughout the house. I'll leave a link up here so you can watch those videos later. We were planning for battery storage and sizing the battery system based on the data that the customer had. Well, the batteries have finally arrived. So we're here to install them today. I'm gonna to be putting them on this wall. Solax batteries today, which is a new one for us. So. We'll be sure to take you along with us for the ride. Make sure you like and subscribe. Let's get into it. So there's already been a slight hiccup. We've got three battery modules to install here, but only one of them has arrived. With battery systems, you have a master, which is like the battery management system is built into it. In the case of the Solax systems anyway, you have a master and then you have slaves. Now they, now they, it's not politically correct to say that. So I think we say the, uh, primary and secondary or something like that. But essentially, got the master and two slaves. We've ordered the slaves, but they have been delayed for delivery. But today what we're gonna do is get the inverter on the wall, get the master in, set it all up, and then hopefully it will just be a case of bolting on the two slave modules, um, which is quite a nice exercise to, to talk about expandability with these kind of systems, because sometimes customers are not sure how much capacity they want. So they could start with a smaller system and then expand later if needed. This is our master and it's a big old beast. It's arrived on a pallet. So we're gonna get this unboxed. Uh, we're gonna get the inverter unboxed. We're also fitting a My Energy Zappi EV charging point. And my job right now is just to try and figure it all out where we're gonna put it all so that it looks neat, that there's plenty of access for maintenance and that it's safe. Brain work, first of all, but measure twice, cut once, that's what they say. Oh, that is pretty heavy. <laughs> Good job Lee's coming. Nah, there's no way I'm gonna be able to lift that on my own, so that is definitely a two-man lift. Um, so we'll wait till Lee arrives for that one, but I will get the inverter unboxed. This is the new Unilite neck light, just been delivered today, being released tomorrow, which is after this video, or before this video will be released. Um, so I'm safe to talk about it in this video, but this is a really cool idea. I've never seen anything like this before. Unilite are coming up with some very innovative products at the moment, which I love. So we're gonna try this out today and see if it's actually any good. So we've got a five kilowatt inverter for this battery system. You might have seen we installed some Solax inverters recently on a farm. Um, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can see that video. And we did find them to be really, really easy to install and set up. So <clears throat> I'm hoping that this battery system will be as easy as the inverters were. And it's quite a chunky inverter though. It's almost as heavy as the battery. Gently rest it on my hip. Oh, this is our five kilo inverter. It's gonna be used just as an AC charger for the battery essentially because the solar is already here. It's got a separate inverter for that. The reason that we're doing this kind of setup rather than changing the existing inverter is because we don't wanna mess up with the customer's feed-in tariff payments. And as soon as you start changing the old inverter, they can potentially lose their feed-in tariff payments. So we're gonna do it this way. We got like the early release prototypes. Ah, that's cool, you've got two brightnesses. So you got the normal brightness and they press it second time it goes even brighter. So the top of this has to be about 30 centimeters down anyway, and we want it to be accessible for maintenance. I reckon about that kind of height, <laughs> which means I think we're not gonna have space for all those other batteries anyway. So that's our bracket. That'll go like that and the whole thing will hang on it. So we just need to measure our, our bracket out, fixing holes, fix that, and then this will just rest on. So this is our consumer unit, which John changed. The process that we did in this property is that we came and did an EICR first. There were a lot of remedials needed. So we upgraded the board, we put a switch fuse in, we fixed loads of faults that were found throughout the property. 
so that all the basic electrical stuff was kind of up to scratch. And now we're ready for this next phase, which is battery storage and electric vehicle charging point. But it's nice that we've got a, a brand new board to kind of feed off of with plenty of spare ways. We've given ourselves a lot of space to work with, which is really helpful. winter I'm gonna go to Tahiti for the winter I think let me know in the comments guys where you would go to for, for winter or if you are a, a extremely wealthy viewer who's got a beautiful holiday home somewhere hot that is just sitting empty and you want me to go and look after it for you for a few months let me know How do you fancy doing the outside bit today? <laughs> oh, I thought you'd say that. <laughs> uh, it's only a zappy, it shouldn't uh, be too hard, but we'll do the inside bit first together anyway before we get the cable out. So we've got a zappy just going on like here. Yep. Um, cable up and through. So I don't mind, it's not raining that bad. I can screw that to the wall. Yeah, we'll just double check with the customer where he wants it, but I'm pretty sure it just needs to go on there. Jordan said bring a saw. So I weren't sure what one he wanted, so I just bought them all. Who's Arch? Shout out to Arch. <laughs> Jordan buying them stolen tools again. <laughs> I'm going to get the boards on the wall. Lee's going to get the charger on the wall. While the rain has stopped, it's always good to get the outside work done first. I don't think I've actually used this Hilti um, I used that. Thing. Um, I thought I used it when I cut that board and then someone was like, that's a metal blade. I was like, well, it still works. Oh yeah, I'm sure it works fine. What we're gonna do is, usually when I'm working with Jordan, he's filming, it's always a late day. So I'm absolutely just gonna smash everything up on the wall and go home. Like, Spike the gadget. It's That's really quite bright, bright, isn't it? Yeah, it's, but it's great, because it saves you having that annoying thing of like so the, to be honest, the head torch. Yesterday, John was wearing his head torch and he was like, oh, I need to stop wearing these, it's like digging into my head. Yeah, and you get all but, sweaty and everything, and it doesn't look great yeah. this way, you know? Yeah, I really like it. I think it's brilliant. So this is a brand new product by Unilight and we've got a special code for you guys to get a discount across all Unilight products. So head to the link in the description below to get 25% off all Unilight gear using our special code. Oh, untethered. What a pleasant surprise. It's about nine o'clock. I've just turned up. Not because I woke up late, but because I had to go get materials and drive across country. I think Jordan's just going to mount the hard board on the wall. I've got the pleasure of a nice car charger. So we're going to stick it up around here somewhere on this wall. Probably do a nice loop, clip up, drill through, a little bit of trunking across into the, I'm pretty sure it's downstairs toilet where the fuse board is. So I'll just start prepping all this, getting it all done. And then hopefully by the time I've done that, he might have got a couple of screws in the wall. Right, so I've marked up my rough height, got a sort of a centre between the metre cupboard and the edge of the wall. Use my marksman just to get my holes marked out, so I'm going to drill them, get my plugs in. Um, so on a zappy, really you want to drill like a 7mm hole, put a brown plug in. I'll get that mounted and then I can come round with my cable and then we'll see where we're going to come out to. installing this hardy backer board and it's just basically a nice level surface fireproof that we can mount all the equipment onto make sure that everything's smooth and level this wall is obviously it doesn't you know it's solid it's not going to catch fire it's not a wooden wall or anything but it just gives us a nice flat neat surface to run everything on few tricks you can do to measure boards like this you can just get your measurements oh, I need 103 
like that. Put your finger like that, butt it against it, and then just use use that to just make a, a line, which is what I did earlier. Or if you've got a meter stick like I've got with your pencil, just line your pencil up to where you where you need it, and then just do the same. And it gives you a pretty straight line, which obviously when you're sawing with a circular saw, that will. I was going to say, that's as straight as a country road. <laughs> oh. And this is why I hate Makita. I hate Makita. I love it. Can't wait to get these new healthy tools. Should we drill out in from out here? Um, yeah. Got that angle? Is that through? No, I won't be yet. Just um, when, when you get near the green tape, you should be just about. Anything yet? No, not yet. Um. Oh, yep, yeah. okay. Yeah, I think you're there. You see Jordan hitting the eye in a sec. <laughs> yeah, that'll probably do, to be honest. I'll say I've already fixed this side. Pardon? I've already second fixed this oh, side. Oh, yeah, sure, okay. Oh mate, there's enough cable. There's enough cable to go to Timbuk Two here. Mate said, push it all through. You can wire like 17 charging points off of this. Oats and honey or Canadian? I'm gonna go with oats and honey. It sounds slightly more healthy. Does that look like a nice up out there? I reckon. Oh, look at that loop. We need to leave about a 30 centimeter air gap above this. So what I'm trying to do is just figure out what that means in terms of mounting it from the ceiling. So that is 30 centimetres, so probably about that. Our bracket needs to be about 40 for our fixings. Yeah, got it. You got about a mile to pull through. Okay. Yep, coffee. same for me, please. Uh, white with no sugar, thank tea you. Uh, tea, please. Yep. Thank you. Yeah. Oh. Drop. <laughs> drop it on these head. What height from the ceiling should I come through? If I want to come through that knockout. At a guess. A guess? Take this. 50 mil. What's this? Right, now see if your guess is correct. Where's your, where's your slate board? <laughs> where's the top end? There we go. Just flip it round. All right, I was wrong. Uh, 80 from the ceiling. Oh, good job I didn't go with your uh, intuition, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, you still would have come out on the board, you just might have munched all the earths. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the inverter on, which is great. I'm just fitting the AC isolator now, ready to feed like a flex to power this up. And then once that's in, we'll get the battery unit, the master battery unit mounted on the wall below. In the meantime, Lee is on the other side, just getting the EV cable all tied in. I'm just crimping ferrules onto these, um, bootlace ferrules onto these wires, but I'm really frustrated because I've lost my Nipex ones. I think Corey probably ran off with them. Um, so I've got my Mr. Quality ones. <laughs> you know, you know something, if it's called Mr. Quality, you just know that it's not quality. 
I mean, they do work fine, but it's just slightly annoying because I had this 100 quid pair of Nipex ones that seem to have gone wandering. I was just saying, like, why do we need so many different tools to do our job as electricians? It's not like if you're a plasterer, you just need a trowel and a bucket, basically. Like, we need so many tools, so many different size screwdrivers, and then all these little Allen keys, and hammers, hole saws, and different types of screwdriver bits, and it's like, we just have an epic amount of tools that we need. I end up basically emptying the van by half before I do any, do any job just to get all the tools that I need. So we checked whether you can mount these sideways, so like landscape rather than portrait. They said, yeah, no, no, no problem at all. Okay, how on earth are we supposed to do that with this mounting system? Because as far as I can tell, this goes on the wall and then this drops onto it. And, you know, with gravity and everything, that'll, that'll hold in place quite nicely. If you've got, if you've got to do it like that, how's that going to work? It's just not going to work. It's going to just slide off every time unless you bolt it onto this, which, but you know, that's not going to work either. I'm slightly distraught right now, trying to figure out what to do. So the thing about this is that we could mount this one portrait like that, but then we're basically not going to have room for the two others that we've got coming. And that's the issue. I originally designed this with them landscape because then we can stack three on top of each other basically. And you know, we'll have enough space for all three of them. But if we have to stack them portrait, we're just not going to have enough space. So we're a little bit at a loss as to what to do, really. Oh, why? I need the loo as well. We can't mount them horizontal. The guy was completely talking through his bum cheeks. It won't work. Like, it won't physically work with the way that the bracket's designed. Oh, this, this guy needs a sack. Ring him back up. Go mental. Chargers on the wall, cables all the way back to the board. So I'm going to do my IR, R1, R2. Then I can get this all back on. And then I'm going to battle with getting a circuit in a breaker. And I've got Jordan's circuit coming through from the battery. That's got to go into the board. Got about four CT clamps to go in the board. So it's going to be busy in there. So I just thought I'll get my tests done here. This is all buttoned up then. If it starts to rain, I don't have to worry about it. Um, so yeah. There's nothing touching on the other side. Let's hope Jordan's not having a slash. Oh, it's better. We'll just send 500 volts down. Nice, perfect. We'll just go between all the cables, make sure that none of them are damaged. Cool, so now we can link R1 and R2 out. We'll go to the other end and link it out with a crocodile clip. Linked out. Live on Earth, let's go around to the tester. I'll see what our R1, R2 is. There you go, 0.09. So we'll write that down for the tester and I can get all this second fixed and finished. It will be okay. It won't, it won't. I'm giving up, I'm flying to Tahiti right now. This call may be recorded or monitored for training and quality control purposes. So what we decided to do, we're going to have to do them portrait. I can't get through to customer service. There doesn't seem to be any way to actually mount them landscape. So I'm going to mount the portrait. I'm going to do one, two, and then put the third one there. So we're going to just install an extra bit of backer board there. And then when that one arrives, we can add the third one up there. It's just the only way to do it, really. So, um, at least we've got a solution. It means I can just crack on without just sitting here scratching my head. Great. That's enough. Cool. I'll tell you what, uh, I can take that through into my trunk in probably. Well, it'll need to have a, an RJ45 plug on it and then... Oh, it'll have to stay on the board then. I think, unless we just cut the RJ45 off of that and then just wargo it instead. 
I don't see what the difference is really. Uh, yeah, I mean it's only two core, isn't it? Yeah. So we don't want the top of the battery any any higher than that. Once you get them in, you can't get them out again. I don't mind the cable hanging out. That's just uh, temporary, but basically in the Zappi, we've got three CTs connected. So we've got one for the grid, one for the solar, and one for the battery. This data is going through to the battery as well. That's going to have a grid CT. I've put the breakers in the board. So we've got one for our AC isolator for the battery, one for our Zappi. Um, so yeah, I just need to get my cables out into the trunk and connect my CTs up, lid that up, just make good in the board where we've come through, put another knockout, put some fire seal in there, and then we can sort of concentrate a bit more on the battery side and see how Jordan's getting on. I want people to know that I am actually very tidy. Moment of truth. That's way about 50 kilos still, I should think. Easy, yeah. All right, if we plan this lift, so we probably just need to bend our knees, and then one, two, three, up. If we line it up there, a little bit more. Underneath, don't we? First, yeah. Right, Not your side. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, two, three. This is when I find I've put it upside down. I think that's how it sits. Is it? Mine lines up with screw hole. Okay. So this is the data cable for the BMS. So this is going to do the communication with the, the battery management system. It comes with this nice little waterproof data cable thingy that you plug in to there. Like that. Make sure it clicks so it holds in place and then just slide it back up. They are a bit tricky, these things, I find, because to get them back over and fit all the way can be a little bit of a nightmare. It's a good idea, I just don't know how practical it actually is. They just need to, I think, stop designing products in, in front of computers and start designing them with electricians in mind, really. Now we've got to do our battery cables. Um, basically, we've got a positive and a negative terminal there, and then these are our positive and negative cables from the inverter to the battery. So that's the positive. So then these plugs are going to plug in to there. Like with the Solis system that we had the other day, I don't know why, but they don't give you pre-made up leads you've got to kind of cut them to length and then put these little plugs on the end which are really fiddly and annoying to put on so slightly weird why uh, why they do that i don't know they do give you ferrules which is nice at least so the cables that they supply with the the for the battery are long enough to kind of go give you a bit of flexibility you've got to cut them short strip them and then terminate this plug onto them so you poke the wire in there and then you push this little click thing down Right. Yeah, there we go. That clicks down and that has clamped on to that wire nicely now. And then we just push that down and click that on. Easy peasy. And then what we've done is we put these in a bit of flexi conduit just to kind of neaten them up and protect them. And then the minus is going to plug in here. And the positive will plug in there. I'm so happy. <laughs> Right, so we're getting there. We've got the Wi-Fi dongle here. We've got the BMS communication cable. So this will communicate between the inverter and the batteries. Then when you add other battery modules on, they just link in and out. There's like link cables between them. But I do believe that because this is our sort of end of line as such, we need to put this to loop through the other side. That is basically like a link cable that's gonna just link from one plug to the other on this side. So we've got very good spelling here. Grounding connection, manoditory. Fantastichnia. Oh, let me tidy that up. So 
So we've taken this top cover off here. There's some dip switches under here, which we use to set the number of batteries that are connected. So that's important. And then the actual power button is here as well, where we use to power it on. So we've got a main DC breaker there, and then the dip switch, which is used to set the, the battery number of batteries. Oh my goodness, the spelling in this is absolutely shocking. The dip switch is used to config the number of battery packs which are communicating to inverter. And look, configing battery system. Battery should have two T's. Come on, people. Accroding to the number of battery packs that have been installed, switch the circuit breaker to on position. Boom. Um, press the power button to turn on the T-bat system. Boom. We have a flashing status light and we should hopefully start to see stuff happening here on the inverter. There we go. Battery is at 45%. Oh, they've been quite generous with their pre-charged battery so that's good okay so it's clicking and, and whirring so um put the small cover plate back reinstall the upper cover power on the inverter now let's see what the inverter side tells us to do status indicator so we've got status status power light off power off green led is on for one second and light off for four seconds is is an idle so now we're going to switch it on and we should see it start to communicate with our battery yep there we go so we've got a 50 percent battery light flashing so we can have a look now and make sure it's all reading correctly so we've got 117 volts on the battery one amp of current state of charge 45 percent there we go bms connected so meter CT1 is reading minus five kilowatts. So it seems like the battery is currently charging. I'm drowning in instructions. As always, the commissioning process is a complete nightmare on these kind of things. Not clear at all. If someone can invent a battery and all the other devices that are just super easy to commission, that would be nice. So it's working, it's charging now, but we do need to come back and do a few little tweaks to just make sure that it is importing and exporting at the right time and stuff but in general it's here it's on the wall we're gonna have to come back to add these extra two modules anyway in about a month from now so uh, we will be back at some point but i hope you've enjoyed this little video if you have make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one you know never believe it's not so